Hi, I'm Sarah Baya and welcome to my science class. Welcome to another interesting and fun lesson as we begin our fourth quarter topics. In today's lesson, we will be comparing the characteristics of the different types of soil. At the end of our lesson, you are expected to identify the types of soil, compare and contrast, and choose the type of soil for plant growth. Before we proceed with our main topic, let us review about the different landforms. Read each statement carefully and try to guess the landform being described. So if you're ready, let's start. If you answer them all correctly, congratulations! As a safety reminder, always be careful in handling materials. Perform the activities carefully so you will not harm yourself. Always perform the activity in the presence of an adult. It forms at the surface of land. It is the skin of the earth. It is capable of supporting plant life and is vital to life on earth. So, have you guessed what it is? Soil is a very important natural resource on earth. It is a complex mixture of rocks, minerals, water, air, organic matter, and countless organisms that are decaying remains on once living things. In today's lesson, we will be investigating the characteristics and the types of soil that is good for planting. For our activity, get some soil sample in your area and place it in a container. Scoop at least 2 tablespoons of soil and place it on a bond paper. Using a stick, observe your soil sample. Describe the color, texture, and odor, and write down things that you see in your sample. Soil is a system in which energy and matter from the sun, the atmosphere, and living organisms penetrate and interact. It is a system because it is composed of many different parts. Each of the layer has a specific function to perform. If soil is important, what is in the soil that makes it important? Soil covers most of the land part of the earth, and it is made up of the following Mineral matter, water, air, and organic materials Mineral matter are rock particles from the bedrock and weathered rock 
air, like carbon dioxide and nitrogen, are found in pore spaces between rock grains. Water is also present in the pore spaces. And there's organic material like decaying plants and animals and living organisms like earthworms, bacteria, and fungi. Earlier we said that soil is a system. It is a system because it is composed of different layers with a special function to perform. If we dig deep into any soil, you will see that it is made up of layers. At the very top is the humus layer. It is thin in some soil, thick in others, and sometimes not present at all in others. Humus is mostly organic materials, such as dead plants and animals, which helps provide nutrients to plants. Top soil is the uppermost layer, composed mostly of minerals from parent material with organic matter incorporated. It is a good material for plants and other organisms to live. Below the topsoil is the subsoil. It is rich in minerals that leak from the upper layers and made up of loosely arranged rocks, sand, and clay. The next layer is the parent rock. It is composed of rocks that are slowly breaking apart, and this layer is where soil is developed. The lowest part of the soil is the bedrock. It is made up of undisturbed large boulders and gravel, and no plant life can survive in this layer. Do you want to have your own garden? What type of soil will you use? Soil is a natural resource that can be categorized into different soil types. Identifying the type of soil is important in order to support the healthy growth of plant life. Soil can be categorized into loam, clay, and sandy soil. Loam is a combination of sand and clay. It has the ability to retain moisture and nutrients. That is why it is also referred to as agricultural soil because it is more suitable for plants and farming. Sandy soil consists of small, loose, and coarse particles of weathered rocks. It is the poorest type of soil for growing plants because of its very low nutrient and poor water holding capacity. Clay soil is the smallest among the other two types of soil. Particles are tightly packed together with very little or no air space. It is very sticky to touch when wet, but smooth when dried. It is very dense and heavy, which does not drain well or provide space for plant roots to grow. All soil contains mineral particles, organic matter, water, and air. 
The combination of this determines the soil's characteristics and properties. If you think that all soil are brown, think again. Soil color range from black to red to white. The color of the soil indicates the amount of organic material present in it. Dark soil contains plenty of organic matter, while white soil indicates poor drainage. Soil is made up of different size particles. Soil texture refers to the size of the particles that makes up the soil. Soil texture can influence whether soil are free draining, whether they hold water, and how easy it is for plant roots to grow. Soil structure describes the way sand, clay, and loam particles are clumped together. Soil structure is important for plant growth, movement of water and air, root development, and nutrient availability. Good quality soil are crumbly and have fine aggregates, so the soil breaks up easily if you squeeze it. The more organic material a soil has, the more rich in nutrient like potassium and ammonium it contains, which is needed to help improve plant growth. Soil water content affects the moisture and amount of nutrients available to plants and soil status. Water in the soil is important because it enables plants to absorb dissolved nutrients which is needed for plant growth. But too much water in soil can cause plants to die. Time for some challenge! The challenge for today is answering the question and choosing the best answer. Let's see if you can outwit, outplay, and outlast and be our soil survivor. So if you're ready to test your read, let's get started. If you answered them all correctly, congratulations! We have learned today that soil has different properties, characteristics, and its importance. So that's it for our lesson today. Don't forget to read more about our lesson in your textbook and module and answer the activities in your worksheet. Once again, I'm your teacher, Sir Abaya. Thanks for listening and see you next time. So for today, see you next time.